today in this lecture uh, we will learn the Bayesian hierarchical um, analysis. Now the Bayesian hierarchical analysis uh, arises uh, when data is in the form of hierarchy, hierarchy in the sense uh, say for example for a particular subject the data has been observed in a repeated manner. So one case is uh, when the data is observed repeatedly for a single subject and classic example will be in a longitudinal, longitudinal data. Uh, suppose uh, uh, growth has been observed in different time point of a single individual. So what happens here? that there will be a for each subject there will be a pattern of growth and there will be an overall growth. So for subject specific effect will be there. So in this kind of uh, data set we look for hierarchical analysis. The first level is the subject level and another is the general level. Uh, so um, as usual another, another example will be in the case of cluster data. Cluster data arises mainly in the survey data, different to survey design uh, and uh, classic example another is when we call the one way ANOVA, these are one case of hierarchical modeling and for this analysis uh, in this lecture again we will be uh, looking for some uh, real life data example in the WinBugs and uh, uh, we will formulate in a Bayesian framework of all the hierarchical model. We will take some examples and we will be implementing in the Winbox, Winbox data analysis. So the learning objectives uh, in this lecture uh, will be of in the three directions. The first one is the Bayesian hierarchical analysis for normal data. Normal data is very frequently encountered in a, in a statistical problem and real life data and, uh, and here we will take the uh, real life data. In fact, uh, before uh, going to any detailed mathematical derivation and posterior derivation, we will be directly use the examples and uh, will implement in the WinBox. Uh, thereafter, uh, we will be looking at the, um, we will learn uh, Bayesian hierarchical analysis for count data. This is also another area where uh, data, um, data is observed in the forms of count. Uh, uh, count and uh, in, in also in the hierarchical format and here also we will uh, take an example and we will implement in the uh, WinBug uh, as a demonstration. Thereafter lastly we will be uh, discussing about the Bayesian hierarchical analysis for binomial data. Uh, here also we will be taking the, uh, we will take the um, uh, uh, real life data example and uh, WinBug implementation will be there. So uh, 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 in a word, we will cover uh, very frequently you encountered data in a, uh, in a real life data, normal count and binomial data and that too in a hierarchical format and uh, uh, we'll, all the analysis will be done in a Bayesian framework. So first our uh, analysis is Bayesian hierarchical analysis for normal data. So um, let us consider uh, this example. The example here is taken from the Gelfand 1999. It's a very popular example. It is uh, it is available in the WinBug's example course. And uh, let me first describe the data. Data is like that. There were 30 rats. Each rat were observed in eight weeks, several weeks, and their uh, weight were observed for different uh, different days. 8 days, 15 days, 60, uh, 22 days, 29 days and 36 days after this day's interval. So this is a some for this is called this is a longitudinal data. The dependent variable here is the weights yij, yij is the weight of the ith rat in the at the jth week and the this is of course a multi-level uh, data. The level 1 is the weights are the observation in the second level and first level is the rat. Actually the rats are the subjects and each rat, each uh, the, ob the observations corresponding to each rats form the cluster and it is in the form of weight and the weekly observation is there. So here we have 
two types of growth. First is individual and population growth. So for each rat, we have the data for different weeks. For each rat, that will be there can be a growth model for uh, for different data points. Their res response variable will be weight for that rat, and the time is will be the re uh, explanatory variable. So this is basically a hierarchical model in the regression format. So this is the our the individual level individual level growth model. Growth line is that expected value of the y i beta naught i plus beta 1 j x j where this beta naught i is the in i f random effect corresponding to the i th rat and corresponding growth of this rat is beta 1 j. There is also an overall or average population growth line it can be represented as y e i e i j here what we are assuming that we are ignoring the individual level growth just overall population growth has been taken. So, if we ignore the individual level growth, we can if we uh, fit that uh, population growth, so there will be no question of hierarchical model. And what we lose here, we will lose we cannot have any uh, individual specific growth rate or intercept estimate. So, the if we represent this graphically, it is somewhat, uh, somewhat like this. See the data points are scattered between, uh, between different points and black lines are for individual growth rate and uh, red line is the overall growth rate uh, go, uh, growth line. So, here if we execute the hierarchical analysis, we can improve upon the individual estimate and the possible analysis will be here of each that has its own line intercept B naught B1 I, we can we can analyze this this way and as all let's follow B, uh, or B i not equal to B naught and this is as I shown you, this is the population growth rate. We can simply ignore. We can take that. We can we can assume that there are no variation on of intercept and growth rates among the uh, among different rats. So the uh, sensible approach will be the compromise between these two. Each rat is his own growth rate, but behind this their own growth rate, there is a common growth rate for all the for all the rats and we have a common assumed distribution for the parameter as well. So, mathematically we can represent that expectation e i j b naught i equal to b i e naught we have uh, I have already shown you I am not going detail and here if we want to uh, represent it in a model format b we can assume that b 1 i since we it is a random effect b i e naught is a normal distribution as usual b 1 i also normal distribution with beta i and this is the random effect distribution. So, ultimately it is come a it is a constitute a random effect model. And now, let us represent this uh, model in a Bayesian framework. We assume that uh, y is equal to normal uh, follows normal distribution which mean x alpha i plus beta i x j minus x bar. Here also I want to mention that the covariate x j has been centered due to some computational advantage. Uh, later on we will show you how the differs while we center it or do not center it and alpha i follows normal distribution with alpha c alpha tau alpha and beta i this and this part is the observational model because uh, in a Bayesian framework as you rem if you can remember there are three parts uh, specifying the observational model specifying the prior. So, here this is our observational model normal and this is our first level prior. We are assuming that the alpha i are ra random. So, we uh, individual individual effect intercept as well as regression coefficient they are uh, following certain distribution we are assuming you know, this is first level prior and within this first level there are other parameters alpha c beta c and the tau alpha beta alpha. These are called several second level uh, parameter and we call the second level. Uh, prior distribution we will assume and here we will assume the non-informative priors and uh, we have discussed earlier that how to take how to consider this discursible prior. So, directly we will now uh, consider how we will implement the Winburg. This is the Winburg in Winburg code. This is our observational model as usual as we read in the model we represented for i equal to 1 to 10 and uh, this is the two level. So, for i equal to 1 l and j equal to 1 to t we have a d normal distribution with tau c and here the 
relationship is specified by the mu ij sitting that in the two level format alpha i and beta i and center coverage x i x j and thereafter uh, we have represented it as uh, Weinberg's code corresponding the first level pair as we did alpha i follows uh, b norm this is typical syntax for Weinberg normal distribution represented by b norm uh, you can check out the manual for other distribution and uh, lastly the second level prior second level prior tau c b gamma distribution as i discussed earlier that this this has become very standard in a regression setup b gamma 0 0.011 1, 1, this is type of fat prior some sort of fat prior and sigma as well we, we uh, again i i want to remind you that uh, winbug use uh, precision rather than uh, variance so but we want to infer on the uh, standard deviation that's why that's why we have converted sigma is, uh, as 1 by square root of uh, precision tau c accordingly other uh, variable has been represented it alpha c alpha tau d gamma beta c normal beta tau whenever the question of that uh, variance is actual since it lie between, uh, between 0 to infinity that's why we prefer the gamma distribution because other it cannot be defined over the minus infinity plus infinity and uh, lastly alpha naught uh, uh, some conversation if you are interested on alpha naught with that centralized uh, 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 centralization then you can use other parametric conversion is also possible uh, but here in this setup uh, so far you have seen the data representation was very simple but here uh, some sort of uh, some differences is their data that's why i am representing the usual x is in a vector x but and uh, there are two levels one is i one is j and uh, uh, and we have centralized the data that's why you have plugging the x bar value as a 22 it has computed externally and uh, we have 30 rats corresponding to i i equal to 1 to n that is we are putting 30 and for 5 weeks we have taken the t5 and here the two dimensional data ij this is represented at, as this structure the structure is like this the syntax is that we have to dot data and we have to uh, write down the entire vector with i and j and thereafter you write down dot dim equal to c 30 by 50 this is something different than whatever we have discussed earlier so that's why i'm trying to mention it and another thing is the initialization here also initial we have seen there are corresponding to we don't have any observed data on the uh, alpha and beta corresponding to the random effect so to start the simulation process uh, we do we need the initial value we, ha we you have already seen the specifying the initial value for uh, uh, alpha beta single variable but not at not in the case of vector in the case of vector this is initial value is uh, represented uh, as this and here we are taking 250 of course uh, in winbox there is an option uh, to generate the in initial uh, value automatically but that may sometimes create problem that's why it's better always better suggested that try to specify the initial values the win box radars here we have 10,000 up updates uh, were uh, retained after discarding the 1000 iteration here we can see that the general parameter alpha naught and beta c these are almost normal distributions and with based on the data alpha naught 106 and uh, this has the credible interval monte carlo error in the subsequent lecture we will uh, see the importance of uh, monte carlo error how to use it and uh, if we can look at the estimated value beta c the standard deviation is very, very low that means it's a very precise estimate the main uh, area here in this model we are interested in the individual specific uh, estimate of the random effect so uh, see here uh, they are uh, for, in the, for individual for number two has a relatively higher growth rate than the other rats and again number five it's a very low uh, lowest growth rate for that rat number fourth rat and if we have the individual specific intercept also if we put a line with 260 and 220 here we can see that the rat number marked as 9 11 and 14 they are forming a separate group uh, larger uh, effect and uh, 10 and 29 is other so in uh, employing the hierarchical these are extra inference we could we could draw 
So these are the advantages of the hierarchical analysis. Now we will direct go to the Bayesian analysis for count data. Count data also very frequently encountered in the real life data. But here we will take an one example of failure of uh, 10 pumps in a pl plant pump. For 10 pumps, time of the time and the number of failures is observed. Ti is the length of the time and Xi is the number of failures and the parameter of interest here is the rate of failure theta i we represent it as theta i so if we try to formulate in a bayesian framework the model can be represent in this fashion we are assuming we make a distributional assumption xi follows Poisson lambda i since we have uh, we are interested in theta i so we but the data is on the count format we have converted the parameter multiplying the time that is the number of it will be the average number of parameter for the i pump number of failures. The prior model will be based on first theta i and theta i itself in the uh, itself involves the parameter gamma parameter alpha beta we have taken gamma because theta i also here the um, greater than 0 failure since it is a failure rate and uh, alpha it is exponential you can take a different type of prior and uh, play around with the data for comparison how the model is performing by choosing different types of priors. So, uh, for learning point of view let us stay with this uh, specific prior. So, as usual uh, we will be implementing in the WinBox and this is the course and uh, uh, we have uh, we already seen most of the cases the normal distribution but here see the how the Poisson distribution is represented. Theta i is d gamma theta i and x i is the d Poisson d Poisson note it for Poisson distribution this is the syntax for the wind bulbs the Poisson lambda i as we read we also write in the in this model theta i is here is the first level prior as I mentioned in the theoretical model and the second level prior here is the alpha and beta that involved in the theta i distribution and data is uh, in, a, in a vector format now let us analysis uh, some interpret the results first this is the alpha beta that is involved in the first level prior theta i follows gamma distribution this has the mean 0 0.75 0 0.29 and corresponding a interval but uh, what where i want to point out here is that look at theta 9 and theta 10 these two pumps has the higher failure rate relative, relatively higher failures than the other and if we look at the pump number 1 and 4, these are the lowest rate and most stable estimate or uh, precise estimate for 1 and 4, though there are higher uh, estimate but their estimate is not stable. So, the advantage of using uh, this hierarchical model here is that we could not only establish the uh, predict the based on the general parameter alpha beta, but for each pump we could predict the the corresponding mean value standard deviation their confidence uh, uh, rather more correctly i should say this is credible interval now we will uh, switch over to the uh, hierarchical analysis of binomial data binomial data here also we will take the example germination of seed there are 21 plates and the number of seeds germinated or observed for ri is the number of seeds germinated or uh, ni out of ni number uh, for 21 plates and there are two types of covariate here one is root extract type x we call it x2i and there is another type seed type now we will analysis this data in a bayesian framework so as uh, ri is the number of seed germinated so we will assume that this is a binomial distribution as uh, with parameter pi probability of germination pi and uh, logit model here in the logit model we will assume that log of pi 1 minus pi logit is a random effect not any fixed effect here bi is a random effect now we will assume that bi follow the normal distribution with mi where this mi is the alpha naught alpha 1 x 1 i x 2 this is the typical and interaction effect is there so we have included x 1 and x 2 if we could ignore this bi we could directly easily we could take the mi as the logit so this will form the likelihood 
and we call it a and here the first level pair is the bi this is the random effect and these all these are the second order uh, left i am not discussing this alpha not alpha again there lot of time i have discussed in the regression setup how this pair is is chosen so now we'll directly go to the and uh, another parameter tau for in the in the uh, random effect model this is as usual gamma distribution and we will discuss in the winberg code uh, this is the our uh, obje observational model like ladlow and corresponding code is uh, here the distributional uh, as only d bin d bin is uh, stands for binomial distribution in the winberg and logit pi equal to bi and bi here is the yeah, our first level prior, prior and uh, second level prior is alpha naught alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 and uh, sigma is d uniform we have taken here and tau is sigma square here are the results here we can see that alpha 1 the individual individual random effect all these are positive but the interaction its interaction effect is negative in alpha 2 that means from uh, from if the covariate level increases 0 to 1 that means in the response that is the increasing pattern uh, if we uh, look at the distributional pattern posterior distributional pattern of the parameter alpha 1 is nearly normal and other distribution are almost nearly normal. So, uh, these are the results and how to arrive these results, how to discard the burn-in samples, how to select the convergence that will be discussed later. Here also we will be interested rather than uh, that general parameter alpha beta, we will be much more interested on the individual as a, a, a specific effect bi. Here also we are, we are uh, imaginary uh, drawn the line and to try to classify the individual level effect you, you see the above the line we may we may grow form a group so once you have the uh, posterior sample you can you can play around in a different manner uh, here we have plotted the individual level uh, uh, estimate along with the credible interval and extreme values and we are putting the line so that we can classify the individual level individual effect estimate and we accordingly we can uh, group the individual so to summarize the whole thing Considering the wide application areas of hierarchical model, uh, we could not cover all the areas, uh, rather we have taken some specific examples uh, based upon normal data and uh, count data and uh, binary data. In the normal data, we have taken the famous uh, rat examples. Uh, that third growth rate examples where we have uh, uh, distinguished between the um, individual growth rates and population growth rates and uh, thereafter we have uh, predicted the uh, uh, subject specific effect and their credible intervals and uh, regarding uh, count data we are very as the requirement is more often on the uh, rate so, rather than uh, considering the uh, uh, average count of a Poisson model, we have taken the rate and uh, a real life example has been taken from the Weinberg failure of a uh, pump in a system and uh, in the binary data uh, also we have taken uh, to demonstrate in the Weinberg system and, and then each, uh, each of the examples, the interesting point here is that uh, in the hierarchical system in uh, everywhere we could be able to predict or uh, estimate the uh, cluster specific or to be very specific subject specific uh, random effect uh, in this model the first level prior has been uh, assumed and uh, lastly uh, uh, we all the examples that have been implemented in a uh, winbugs uh, software as well